Today in the news we got some boost fixes, some testing on a leaked firmware, and some Navi ray tracing cores. What's up guys, I'm Snows and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with AMD. Today is September 10th and we got an update from AMD about the boost problem fix that many Ryzen 3000 owners have been waiting for. The new AGISA firmware called 1003A BBA will fix a bug that reduced boost speeds of third gen CPUs. AMD claims that the reduction was between 25 to 50 megahertz, but others saw different results. Anyways, right now this new firmware has been sent to motherboard vendors and should be available within two to three weeks directly through your motherboard's website. While this firmware fix hasn't been released officially by AMD to consumers yet, it seems like a leaked version of the fix has been making the rounds since yesterday. It was leaked on the Chip Help forum, and while you can go download and install it for yourself, I would highly advise you to wait for an official version. You don't want to mess with your CPU's microcode with a beta version. In any case, Tom's Hardware took it upon themselves to test it out, and the results are kind of a mixed bag. They tested the new AGISA 1003 ABBA on the 8-core 3700X and the 12-core 3900X. In their previous testing to see if those chips truly had an issue when boosting, Tom's Hardware concluded that both those chips boosted really close to advertised speeds, although it never actually reached it. In their case, it was only 25 megahertz below advertised clocks, but as we saw with Derbauer's survey, some were as low as 250 megahertz below. Let's get into the new results, this time with the leaked firmware. With this one, the Ryzen 3700X now reaches its advertised clock of 4.4 gigahertz without any problem. It's worth noting that their setup kept the CPU under 55 degrees Celsius throughout the test. Now for the 3900X. In this one, the results are very different. Before, their chip would reach 4.575 gigahertz across the whole test on the old firmware. With this new one though, the CPU starts off great within the first few seconds, even peaking above advertised clocks. But a few seconds in and it drops lower than it used to at 4.55 gigahertz. Moving even further into the test and the clocks drop again to 4.45 gigahertz and stay there for the remainder of the test. That's 150 megahertz below advertised clocks, meaning the sustained load must cause the CPU to want to switch cores or something. You can even see the cores trading places across the test with the 3900X as indicated by the color change. Now there is a chance that this leaked version is not the final one despite the fact that it is also a GISA 1003 ABBA. The SMU version might be different, but we won't know until motherboard vendors start to distribute the new BIOS. In any in any case, Tom's hardware's testing does show there is still some weird behavior happening here, but I think AMD did fix the main one, which was that the fastest core couldn't reach the advertised clocks. So the CPUs will now likely reach the single core boost clock, but assigning the fastest core to the most demanding workload is still something that needs to be worked on for systems with two chiplets. That's why the 3700X boosted properly. With only one eight core chiplet, it's easier to keep the workloads managed. When you jump to two chiplets, then the Ryzen scheduler needs to figure out where to assign the fastest core. At least that's one problem down for AMD. With time, optimization for systems with multiple chiplets should fix this issue. It's gonna have to be a combined effort with AMD and whatever operating system it's on. Moving on, in console news, it looks like AMD's Radeon solution for ray tracing will actually be similar to Nvidia's. For a while, we thought that AMD would use some kind of hybrid shaders to deal with ray tracing, essentially using the stream processors in a slightly different way to make it happen. Well, thanks to an interview with GameSpot, the developers of Gears 5 seem to have confirmed that the GPU inside the Xbox Scarlet will have dedicated ray tracing cores. Colin Penty, the art director, said we don't have anything to announce right now in terms of gears with the new hardware, but I'm definitely super excited about what the new hardware could do. Having dedicated ray tracing cores is huge. Since the Xbox Scarlet will be equipped with Zen 2 cores for the CPU and a Navi GPU, it's safe to say that this tech will probably end up in the next gen Navi cards, or just the higher end ones that we'll see next. 
Now this next one isn't really news, but it's one hell of a funny video. So the Sea of Thieves developers just had a live stream to reveal their new pet update. Basically, this month you'll be able to have pets in the game. Now the funny part is that they had a seven-year-old squirrel monkey on stream, and it was just hanging out with the devs, having some fun, hopping from shoulder to shoulder, until, well, until this happened. I'm gonna cut it right there so you guys can uh, go ahead and enjoy the full clip by yourself, but yeah, that's one hell of a monkey. Anyways guys, that is pretty much it for the news today. Hopefully you've enjoyed. If you have any questions, leave them down below. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Now, uh, you know what? I'll put the full clip of the monkey right after, all right?